All right, homework 12, slide 11. A jar of tea is placed in sunlight until it reaches an equilibrium temperature of 32.2 degrees Celsius. So this is going to be the starting temperature, T initial for the tea. 32.2 for my example. In an attempt to cool this liquid tea, which has a mass, so mass of the tea is equal to 170 grams, we add ice, which has a, a total mass, total mass of ice is total mass of ice is 109 grams. The T initial, the initial temperature for the ice is at 0.0, .0 degrees Celsius, so it's right at its melting point. At the time at which the temperature of the T is 25.8 degrees Celsius, so our T final, the final temperature for the T is going to be 25 Point eight degrees Celsius. They want the mass of the remaining ice in the jar. So, um, how? What is the mass remaining? I'm not even spelling remaining right now. Mass of the ice. Mass of remaining ice equals question mark. Okay. The specific heat of water is this. This is C water. Specific heat capacity of water is 4186. Assume the specific heat capacity of the T to be that of pure liquid water. Answer in units of uh, grams. Okay, so the heat coming out of the T, Q out, is going to be the heat that goes in to the ice, melting at least some of it. And we're trying to figure out after some of that ice has melted and become part of the solution in the jar, part of the tea itself, how much mass of ice remains. So, okay. This heat is going to be coming again out of the liquid, out of the tea. Gosh, why won't this work sometimes? It's like, hello. Okay. And it's going to go into the ice, thereby melting it. And then that melted ice is going to be increasing temperature until it reaches the equilibrium temp of whatever, whatever this T final is. Okay, so my Q out, I want to make it positive. So I can take the absolute value. I can negate this Q out. This will be negative mass of the T times uh, the specific heat capacity of water times the change in the T's temperature. This is going to equal the mass of melted ice. So some of this, you're not going to use the whole 109 grams for this. It's only the mass of the ice that has been melted times the latent heat of fusion for ice plus the mass of the melted ice times the specific heat capacity of water, because that melted ice is going to become liquid water, times the change in temperature of the melted ice. This is how you solve the problem. We're going to look for the mass of the melted ice. We'll subtract that from the 109 grams, and this will give us the mass remaining. So, okay, I will factor out my M melted my mass of the ice that is melted times the latent heat of fusion for ice slash water at its freezing point plus specific heat capacity times the change in temperature for the melted ice. And this is equal to mass of the T times specific heat capacity of water times the change in temperature for the T, which by negating it, this number is going to come out to be positive. If I look at my example, I'll just take 32.2 and I will subtract the final temperature. Negating just helps me reverse the subtraction, keeping everything positive, minus 25.8. I take the difference between these two temperatures, and it gives me the change in temperature for the T, which will be, for my example, 6.4. 
To solve for the mass of the melted ice, I'll take mass of the T times the specific heat capacity of water, which is given in the problem, times the change in temperature for the T, just make sure it's positive. And then you can divide by the latent heat of fusion of ice plus the specific heat capacity of water times the change in temperature for the part of the ice that gets melted. The change in temperature, the ice goes, the ice, ugh, some of the ice melts, becomes liquid water, and then its temperature can start to increase up to 25.8 or whatever your final temperature value is. So the ice, the melted ice, will experience a change in temperature of, in my example at least, 25.8 degrees. Yep, that's where it gets to. Okay, and this will give me the mass of the melted ice cube. The only thing they don't give you for this problem for some reason is the latent heat of fusion. For ice, L, ice, you'll need to plug in this number. I've had to look it up myself. Uh, let me see. This was... Pardon me. Oh, yeah. This is 3.33 E5 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius, or joules per kilogram, so you can, uh, you can use this value, 3.33 E5, for your latent heat of fusion for ice, and then you'll have your specific heat capacity of water. This will give you the mass of the melted ice, but that's not your final answer. To get your final answer, you take, because they want how much ice remains, you take the original mass of the ice. Here, this is my original mass of the ice. It'll be 109 grams. And then I subtract the mass that's melted, and this will give me the remaining mass of ice. So again, plugging in the mass of the T times Cw times the T's change in temperature, keeping this positive, divide by the enthalpy of fusion of ice plus the product of the specific heat of fusion, or sorry, the specific heat capacity of water times that liquid water's change in temperature. It'll come up to the same final temperature as your T. This, doing this operation gives you the melted mass the mass of the melted ice, you subtract that from the original mass of ice, and this will give you what's remaining. Thank you for watching. Study well.